In this final segment, we're going to talk about Freud's theory of development, and it's called the psychosexual theory of personality development. Now, I need to tell you that this theory is very controversial. It's loaded with some highly sexual content. You may not want to have your children around to hear this. So if you're playing this out loud and you have children, this would be a great time to get headphones. Uh, but listen, no introduction to psychology course would be complete if it skipped Freud's theory of psychosexual development because it is so well known and it is the basis of psychotherapy uh, for psychoanalysts today. Um, now, they may have different takes and interpretations of it, but that the basic ideas continue today. So some people are shocked by uh, Freud's theory of psychosexual development. I wouldn't be surprised if you were shocked. You ready? Here we go. And he, Freud really did say these things. Now, Freud argued first that from birth, that we all have a kind of sexual energy called the libido. And where that libido is focused, where our sexual energy is focused, moves around to different places on our body from birth into hmm, about the teenage years. And it develops over five stages. Um, the place where that sexual energy or libido resides during a stage, Freud called that an erogenous zone, erogenous zone. And this is the part of the body where the id seeks the most pleasure during a particular stage. So for Freud, if someone's libido or sexual energy was frustrated during a stage of development, then that child would grow up to be an adult who was someone who was depressed or anxious about the world and in ways they, they couldn't manage. Freud also argued that if your sexual libido was not satisfied during the appropriate stage for the appropriate amount of time and to the appropriate extent, then your, some of the energy, the libido, would get stuck in that erogenous zone. Um, and that the kinds of things or traits that you had as an adult would give Freud an idea of what stage of psychosexual development you had gotten stuck in. So um, I made a joke before about cigar smoking and bananas. You won't be surprised that if somebody smoked all the time, maybe they got stuck in a particular stage that focused around the mouth, for example. There are five stages in Freud's psychosexual theory of personality development. The first three stages is where all the action is. Really, the third stage is kind of incredible. Um, the five stages are oral, anal, phallic, latent, and genital. And you go through them, according to Freud, in that order. So I'm going to describe them to you in that order. And again, the first three stages are the stages that Freud um, really put a lot of energy into developing his theory. So the first stage, the oral stage, that's kind of easy to remember because when you deal with babies, what's the first thing a baby does when it grabs onto something? They stick it in their mouth. They explore the world through their mouths. So Freud argued that from birth until about a year and a half old, babies were in the oral stage. Their libido, their sexual energy was fixated on pleasure associated with the mouth. Um, now, if you got stuck because of a uh, fixation in the oral stage, some failure of gratification of your mouth when you were an infant, then Freud said that you would, as an adult, be constantly doing things with your mouth. So Freud was a smoker, right? So smoking all the time, Freud could understand that as a kind of oral fixation. Uh, people who overeat, who constantly need to put food in their mouths. Freud would argue, again, that's a kind of uh, oral fixation that came from uh, an inability to successfully move through the oral stage. Okay, so the first stage is the oral stage, birth to about a year and a half old. From a year and a half old until a year about three, 
um, Freud said that we all go through what he called the anal stage. And the anal stage essentially corresponds to potty trading. Um, the erogenous zone in Freud's model of the anal stage is not surprisingly the anus. For Freud, the key thing in the anal stage was essentially controlling your ability to poop. Uh, and he said that there were two ways that you could become fixated in the anal stage. You could become anal retentive or anal expulsive. So if you think about children and pooping, uh, do they, um, do infants manage, or children, young children manage to do so in a way that's orderly and clean and neat? Um, if so, and if they get stuck in this stage, then they might become anal retentive. And people who are anal retentive are obsessed with neatness and order, sort of the opposite of the messiness of pooping or messy pooping. The other way you could be fixated in Freud's model is anal expulsive, which means you are in a kind of pooping all over. Um, generally, not really, but, but I'll show you an exception. But it it's, would be people who are super messy or super disorganized. Just two years ago, there was a big story in the news in New Jersey. There was a high school, I think it was a high school, where um, every day somebody found a big pile of human poop on the track or in the, field, the football field. And people were like, what is going on? And there was a big forest. If somebody really needed to poo, why couldn't they do it in the forest? It turned out it was the high school principal who was going out every day to poop on the field where the students were playing. That high school principal uh, would be considered in a psychoanalysis as somebody who was fixated in the anal stage. Okay, that's the first two stages. The third stage really packs a punch, so get ready for this. This is the phallic stage, and both boys and girls go through the phallic stage, according to Freud, when they're three to about six years old. And for Freud, this is the stage of psychosexual development that has the most conflict. In the phallic stage, the erogenous zone, the place where the libido is focused, is the genitals. Now, for Freud, how boys and girls went through the phallic stage differed. The process that boys went through, he called the Oedipus or Oedipal complex. That comes from a Greek tragedy where someone, a male person, falls in love with his mother. And that's basically Freud's idea. So here's, according to Freud, what happens to boys as they're going through the Oedipal complex. What boys do is they become attracted to their mothers in a sexual kind of way. In other words, they would like to replace their father as the mother's love interest, okay? So that's the boy's desire. So the boys are going through this feeling and then at a certain point they realize, according to Freud, oh my goodness, if my father realizes that I need to push him out of this relationship or replace him as my mother's love interest, then he's really going to be angry with me. And as a result of that anger, he may cut off my penis. Yeah, that was Freud's theory. Boy falls in love with mom, wants to get rid of dad, fears that dad's gonna figure out that he wants to replace him and then fears that dad will stop the boy's process by cutting off his penis. Somehow this is associated in Freud's mind with boys understanding at this point that girls don't have a penis and assuming that someone cut it off. Okay, so now these boys are really conflicted. They're in love with their mother. They're afraid their dad's gonna cut their penis off. What are they gonna do? How do they solve this conflict? For Freud, the way they solve this conflict is by starting to identify with their father. Um, and by identification, I mean act the same way that the boy's father acts. So if the boy's father is really outdoorsy, then the son becomes outdoors, outdoorsy. If the boy's father is really bookish, then the boy becomes bookish. If the father's really into football, the boy gets really into football. Um, so it, for Freud, the resolution of the Oedipal complex is for 
the son to start copying the father. Since mom loves dad, so I'll be like dad. Evidence that uh, Freud would use in support of this theory is that sometimes men pick wives that are a lot like their mothers. A uh, little more on the identification uh, process, according to Freud. So these little boys are dealing with the stress of feeling attracted to their mother, being fearful of their father, that their father's going to figure it out and cut their penis off. So they become like the father, so the father won't hate them, because why would a father hate somebody who's copying them? And they also get the benefit of love from the mother, since mom loves dad, so I'll be like dad, and I'll get mom's love, and dad won't cut my penis off. And according to Freud, through this process, um, culture is essentially passed, that um, boys will adopt the values of their father. Kind of wild, right? All right, ladies, got to tell you, you don't get off the hook any easier. Freud has a theory for us too. So for girls between the ages of three and six years old, Freud argued that little girls go through something called the Electra complex, the Electra complex. And what happens in the Electra complex? Well, little girls aged three to five fall in love with their fathers and want to replace their mothers so that their father, they, they, the little girl, can become the love interest of their father. Now, little girls don't have a penis, so they can't worry about it getting cut off, but they do kind of the opposite or maybe the same thing. Little girls are supposed to develop penis envy at this stage. And what is penis envy? Penis envy is envy over the fact Envy of little boys and men for having a penis that we don't have. Or uh, some interpretations of it are not that the little girls envy the penis that males have, but they actually envy the power that men have in society. And a penis is just a representation of that power. Now, so a key point for girls in the electric complex is that they realize they don't have a penis. Well, then the little girls have to figure out well, where did my penis go? My brother's got a penis. Why don't, where did mine go? And for Freud, what little girls do is they blame their mothers for castrating them, for cutting off their penis. Okay, so then little girls are kind of stuck in the mirror reversed image of little boys. And that is a little girl is in love with dad and furious with mom since mom cut off their penis. So now what are they going to do? Well, they identify with mom, they become like mom, so that I guess mom won't cut off any other parts of their body. I don't know. Uh, and since dad loves mom, then dad will love me and it'll mom won't hurt me anymore and it'll all work out. So little girls, according to Freud, identify with their mother through this process. And Freud would argue that women often pick men who look like their fathers uh, as their spouses. And you might be able to think of examples in your family or amongst your friends where that happens. I can. It's a little creepy. Okay, that was stage three. Now you might think, wow, stage four, my God, what's going to come next? Stage four for Freud was called the latent stage. This is from the age of six to puberty. So you would think that a psychosexual theory of personality development would really get interesting in puberty. But no, for Freud, it's just the opposite. He says that from six to puberty, there's no erogenous zone, none. And there's all sexual feelings are repressed. And instead, children focus on developing their intellect and their social skills. That's like a big change. I don't know what to tell you about it, but that's what Freud proposed. And the final stage, the fifth stage, is the genital stage. It's puberty through adulthood. And for Freud, that's when um, your erogenous zones are your genitalia, and you can develop uh, intimate adult sexual relationships. So that's Freud's theory of psychosexual development. Told you. Interesting, right? Uh, now, how do we evaluate Freud's theory of psychosexual development? Now we've talked about 
the difficulties associated with doing experiments, controlled experiments in psychology. This is obviously one that's hard to do a controlled experiment on. So it's difficult to test Freud's psychosexual theory. It's also challenging to test um, the unconscious or to observe our own unconscious because we're not conscious of it. Um, but there's a lot that Freud got right. So for example, the emphasis on childhood traumas and childhood issues um, sort of haunting us into adulthood and shaping our adult behavior a lot. Maybe most theories of uh, mental illness and uh, uh, therapy assume that even today. Um, we do use defense mechanisms. Sometimes our use of defense mechanisms is unconscious. Sometimes we can use them consciously. Um, and Freud's theory does prove to be a useful conceptual framework. Even if you just use it to reject it, it's still, Freud still had the power of shaping the foundation of theories of personality development and psychotherapy. And I will give you one update. There's a very, very interesting book out now called Everybody Lies, written by um, a scientist, a data scientist uh, from Google, who analyzes the searches that we perform on Google. So Google keeps track of what everybody searches, hopefully anonymously. And uh, this fellow makes a very good point that surveys that psychologists often use are so fraught with social desirability bias that they don't give you a correct uh, sense of what people are really like and what their desires truly are. So this fellow analyzed search data and he also analyzed data from a pornography website called Pornhub. And what this guy found that's consistent with Freud's theory is that a surprising, not a huge number, it's, it's still a small number, but a surprisingly large number of people who are in Pornhub search for videos of sex with moms and sex with dads. So there you go. Evidence in support of Freud's theory that um, Freud probably would be very happy to learn of. All right, that's it about Freud. Um, that's the end of this unit. Uh, in our next unit, we will talk about other theories of personality.